everybody, and welcome to a special reaction edition of the Saints Insider Podcast. Zach Ewing with Luke Johnson, Rod Walker, Matthew Paris, as the uh, Saints have fired offensive coordinator Pete Carmichael, also announced they've let go of a couple of his assistants, and we are here for a quick reaction. Uh, we will have a full Saints Insider Podcast tomorrow, hopefully have some more information by then, some more headlines to discuss, uh, but as of right now, we know Pete Carmichael is gone. We also know that Cody Burns, wide receivers coach, is gone, and also Bob Bicknell, senior offensive analyst for – or senior offensive assistant, excuse me, for the Saints. So, guys, uh, let's let's start uh, – let's start with you, Rod. What, what's your initial reaction to this, which not not a huge surprise, but also a sweeping change for an organization that has not had a lot of those? Yeah, I think um... – and we talked about it on the podcast often. We thought that if there were some changes, that Pete Carmichael would be that guy. And um, turns out he was. Um, they had to do something different. I mean, this team couldn't run it back with with the same coaching staff, same quarterback. I mean, they just couldn't do that. I don't think anybody would have accepted that. So they made a move, and it ended up being um, Pete Carmichael, who's, you know, as we all always talked about, the offense really struggled at times this season. So, um for well, the past two seasons um, since he actually took over the play calling duties. So I don't think it's really a big surprise. Um, um, you, you mentioned Cody Burns. That one surprised me a little bit just because I just felt like the receivers, especially as young as they were and playing most of the season without Michael Thomas, I thought the receivers did. Um, you know, I thought they did okay, especially considering how young they were. Luke, how about you? Uh, your, your reaction, this is a franchise, you know, Pete Carmichael's been – with this franchise for 18 years, he joined with Sean Payton in 2006. He's been officially the offensive coordinator since 09. He's only called plays for a couple of years, and, and they were not very good years. Yeah, I, I mean, this is, I think, something that, that you know, a lot of us saw coming. Um, I, I think, frankly, a lot of us were surprised they didn't make this move last year. Uh, you know, I, I think the Saints, uh, they, they felt comfortable with Pete as their offensive coordinator. They, they felt comfortable with the scheme. I think they still, it, Dennis Allen said, the other week that he still feels comfortable with the scheme. Um, but, you know, the fact is they they underperformed last year in a lot of different ways, and there was a lot of different excuses you can make for that with, between the quarterback injuries, injuries to Michael Thomas, Jarvis Landry. They had, I think, nine different starting offensive line combinations last year. So they say, okay, well, well we're going to fix some of our issues. We're going to we're going to get Michael Thomas back. We're going to hope he's, he's healthy. We're going to go sign a quarterback. You know, we're, we're going to have a, you know, see what what happens with better health on the offensive line and and for the most part they got everything they wanted um and you know, it still wasn't good enough the numbers are are marginally improved um you know the scoring output at the end of the year kind of pulled their scoring average up into the top 10 league wide but just was not consistent enough offensively this year and i, I think a lot of us a lot of us saw this coming um now the big question to me is how big of a step do they take away from the Sean Payton era? Because uh, Pete was going to always be tied to Sean. Um, you know, it's a, a, a quote I remember um, just like hearing a player say about this offense was that it had Pete Carmichael's fingerprints all over it, but it was, it was Sean Payton's offense. So do they go completely out of the system? Do they completely revamp things? Um, do they go in house? Ronald Curry's still on the staff. You know, he's somebody who's gotten some uh, some offensive coordinator interest in the past. Uh, do they let him step up and call the plays and, and kind of run the same version of what they've been doing, just a little bit different? Um, it's a big question. But um, but as far as Pete being gone, I, I think this is something that we all kind of saw coming. Matt uh, Matthew Paris comes to us. He's new this season. For those who don't know, covered the Washington Commanders and Washington football team for uh for that beat and, and matt this is something you've been through a lot with that franchise a lot of coaching changes could just kind of feel this one coming toward the end of the year they were going to have to change something and if it wasn't dennis allen it can't really be Derek carr because of salary cap implications pete carmichael was was certainly the next most likely guy yeah, and I wonder today how much of this is just the start you know they announced those three names but some notable guys who we know have been rumored to go elsewhere. Joel Thomas, you know, he interviewed for the running backs coach position with the New York Giants. He remains on staff as of now. But if they bring an outside offensive coordinator, does that guy bring in his own set of staff to try and do this? But 
I think the Saints are in a interesting spot because you know Dennis Allen is going into a must win year. Um, a lot of times, will that will that prevent you know your top of the line offensive coordinator candidates from taking a job like this if they know they can be out after one season? So I'm interested to see uh, the list of candidates or or just who the Saints interview throughout this process, even if they end up sticking with Ronald Curry, but. Uh, yeah, this move wasn't very surprising. Even the late push at the end of the year, I don't think was enough to save Pete Carmichael's job, that they had to do something. Yeah, and, and, and if there is any surprise to this, that's what it is, Rod, is that the team was much better offensively in December and, and then the final game in January. Um, but but ultimately, and you wrote a column that you can read on NOLA.com slash Saints now, like ultimately something, something just had to be done. Yeah, I just, I mean, like I said earlier, I just don't know how you could run it back with the exact same team and think that things are going to be better. I mean, we've kind of talked about how easy the schedule was this season. And I mean, it was just really no reason for this team not to, to do well this year. And they came up short, didn't even make the playoffs for the third straight year. And I mean, you look at what Tampa Bay did, what they did yesterday. I mean, this is a team that wasn't supposed to be, I mean, we all thought they would be the worst team in the division. They ended up not only winning the division, but, you know, making it to the divisional round of the playoffs. And the Saints didn't meet expectations. And, again, they just had to do something to to switch things up. And, um, you know, maybe this will be – I don't know if this will be enough to get the fans back on board and saying, oh, okay, they're going to be good now. But they did do something. So, Well, yeah, it's definitely yeah. not enough to make the fans – <laughs> the, fans wanted, the fans wanted one thing and one thing only. No, 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 yeah, the fans want a lot of stuff. Uh, it's definitely not that. It's definitely not that. But um, but I, I'm with you, though. And it's interesting you bring up the Buccaneers, too, because they've made the playoffs, what, four straight years now? Um, and you know, after last year, they, they got rid of their offensive coordinator and, and they brought in a, a new guy, Dave Canales, and he has his quarterback playing really well. He has the offense playing really well. So, yeah, it's a it's an interesting parallel there. You know, I, I think you can you can say some some new ideas or, or some uh, just some new leadership in that side of the room could potentially pay off in a big way. Um, but like Matt's right, um, you know, if if people around the league are potentially looking at Dennis Allen as a lame duck coach, it might might kind of dilute their pool of candidates. I will say we uh, when I covered Washington, they we had the same discussion about them and then they ended up with Eric Bieniemy. after all that of who wants to take this job then they got the big name and now that didn't necessarily uh work out for them as well as they hope but actually I think Bieniemy is a name that could be interesting here especially if they want to harp on accountability details Eric Bieniemy is that guy he's very demanding in, in practice and if he can't land a head coaching job this cycle you know where is he going to go offensive coordinator wise? Maybe this is a spot that would be intriguing for him because he also comes from that Andy Reid tree and, you know, Sean Payton and John Gruden, they all kind of work within that same style of offense. Now, you know, it, it's a little bit speculative, but he, he's a guy I thought of that. Um, I'm just wondering where he's going to end up this off season. And lo and behold, the saints have an open position right now. For uh, a New Orleans native who, uh, you know, um, I think he interviewed for the head coaching job here too when, when it came up and after Sean Payton retired. Yeah, I was going to say, I know yeah. Pete was a guy that I thought, I didn't know if they would get rid of him totally. I thought they might keep him around the building and give him some other title analyst or something. But, uh, you know, this is this. So th that part of it probably did surprise me. I wouldn't be surprised if, Are you talking he, about, ends up in, if he ends up in Denver. With, huh? oh, you talking about Pete Carmichael? Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying, I thought they might keep him around as an analyst or something. I didn't know what title they would give him. So I am a little surprised that they completely parted ways with him. I wouldn't be surprised if he ends up in, in Denver working with Sean Payton as, in some capacity maybe. But, uh, uh, yes. The Mile High Saints being built in, in Denver. I, I mean, but what you guys say is correct. Like, the, the whole thing is here, okay, I, I think everyone agrees change was needed, change is good. What is the change going to be? A comment from Jacques here says, Allen retooled the defensive staff. That unit took a step back. Should fans trust Allen to build an offensive staff? Well, he's, he's going to have to. Um, the other thing that I'll mention, guys, is that we don't know if this is it. Uh, Joel Thomas interviewed with the Giants last week. He could be possibly on his way out. Um, we don't know. D Doug Marone is clearly the veteran member of the staff. He's still there. 
Ronald Curry, the quarterback's coach, is still there. He he called some plays in the preseason, could be a candidate to replace um, Carmichael eventually. So lots, lots to sort out here. We will have a full Saints Insider podcast for you tomorrow and another one Friday. So hopefully we'll know more. We expect to talk to Mickey Loomis this week as well. Um, and so there will be lots lots to tune in for. If you have not already, subscribe to the SaintsOnNola.com YouTube channel. Uh, that way you'll get all of our videos. We're usually in person, but kind of did this one. Emergency status uh, got, got, uh, got this reaction up for the news that Pete Carmichael, Bob Bicknell, and Cody Burns fired. One, one more question for the group before we, we wrap it up for today. Rod, you mentioned Cody Burns was kind of the surprise to you. There was clear dysfunction on this offense. And at times, Derek Carr had sort of infighting with both Chris Olave and Michael Thomas, two of Cody Burns' wide receivers. Should we read into the fact that maybe Cody Burns was, was not on the Carr slash Allen side of this? Um, and, and maybe that's why he, he's one of the ones who had to go? Um. I, that's hard for me to answer. I don't really know. I think a lot I'm of times, these, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know with these receivers, me personally, I think a lot of times I just kind of chalked up any issues they had with them working with a new quarterback for the first time this season and Derek Carr, and and I just felt like that's what some of the issues were. But you know, maybe there was some, you know, when watching film, maybe Dennis Allen and and his staff saw some things in Cody that that wasn't actually working, and you know, that may have <laughs> been above my. Um, <laughs> my um, level of expertise maybe, but I, I thought considering how young that the receiving core was, I thought they were pretty solid. They definitely, if you had given me a list of all the assistant coaches and said, who should they get rid of? Uh, I think, I don't think Cody Burns would have been high on my list. I think, well, I won't name the ones who I would, who I would have had higher, but I don't think Cody Burns would have been that high on my list. Yeah. I thought it was surprising yeah. a little bit, but um, I thought this Michael Thomas like vague tweet, he he uh, posted it maybe on Instagram, but or also on Twitter. He said, "People who accept mediocrity don't like high achievers. High achievers don't like people who accept mediocrity. If you're going to talk about setting the bar, you must be willing to hold the bar." And that was about an hour and a half before Pete Carmichael and Cody Burns were fired. So I don't know if that was a shot at those former coaches there. You never know with him, but I just think it was in they. This group clearly wasn't on the same page at times this season. And, you know, I, I know we can chalk that up to, for instance, A.T. Perry's inexperience or even Chris Olave's, but, you know, I think maybe they need a coach to demand those type of details if you do have a young core. Um, you know, I know Jeff, who isn't here, but he brought up players not studying film. Um, I don't know if it was some of the young receivers at play, but – you know, it's those sort of things is you need this coaching staff to really prop up the group if they are young. And it looks like the Saints felt like they weren't getting that uh, with Cody Burns. Yeah, cl clearly a um, and Cody's got, uh, Cody's got a change it. was needed. Oh, go ahead. Uh, I think Rod, Rod may have a little bit of an echo, but but yeah, we we um, we, we expected change. We got some change. Rod, you were saying about Cody Burns. Yeah, I was going to say, you know, he's a guy that had never coached in the NFL till last year when he um, came in, when Dennis Allen hired him. And Dennis spoke really highly of him. But, you know, I, I know that transition from coaching in college to coaching NFL guys, especially receiver positions, probably uh, can be a bit challenging. So, I mean, I, I don't – again, I don't know enough about the dynamics of how that wide receiver room was. But just him making that transition, you know, maybe, you know, we'll see where he goes next. I mean, he may be a guy who – heads back to college. I don't know. Luke, do you accept, do you expect more shoes to fall here uh, before, before the saints off season overhaul is complete? Yeah, I, I do. I do. Uh, I, I'd be surprised if this is the end of it. Um, uh, you know, I think the, just seeing Joel Thomas interview elsewhere, um, yeah, it's kind of, kind of a similar sort of deal that we saw last year with Chris Richard. Right, um, where uh, he was their their co defensive coordinator. He'd been with the team for a couple of years, um, but they, there was just there was some philosophical differences between what he wanted to do, what Dennis wanted to do. Um, we saw him interview a couple of places, and it kind of dragged on for a little bit before the Saints ultimately said, um, "You know, we're we're parting ways, we're moving on." So um, I, I would not be surprised if there's there's more 
uh, there's there's going to be more moves coming up coming along, especially if they go outside the box or outside of the house to sign an offensive coordinator. Um, you know, I would expect that that coach to want to bring in some of his own guys. All right, so we'll find out. Uh, we know we we talked about John Gruden a lot on the podcast last week. He has been around the Saints facility. Certainly has to be considered a candidate for the offensive coordinator position. We'll see who else. We'll have a, a full list of candidates that Matt you put together. Uh, on the website this afternoon on NOLA.com slash Saints. And as I said, we'll have a full podcast tomorrow. We hope to have spoken to Mickey Loomis by then, um, and we'll have some reaction from him, maybe some more changes and more of our ideas as to what's next. So look for that on the Saints on NOLA.com YouTube channel. Subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the thumbs up button for us. And uh, we appreciate each and every one of you watching. Luke Johnson, Matthew Paris, Rod Walker, thank you guys for stopping by. I'm Zach Ewing, and we will have more tomorrow on the Saints on NOLA.com YouTube channel and on NOLA.com slash Saints all day long. Saints fire their offensive coordinator, some staff members, and that's just the beginning of this offseason. Till tomorrow, everybody. Thanks for watching.